Sri Guru Biyona Maga children. So, we are, I am welcoming you all uh, 12 standard children for the online class and I hope uh, you are enjoying the class. We are not able to meet in uh, street, so we are uh, meeting in uh, the online platform. I believe that we are completed the lessons and you, I hope you are learning at home. We are uh, there for this third unit prose and the lesson name is in celebration of being alive. Okay, children, I want to ask a question to you. Are you all uh, celebrating something? Yes. Yeah, what all the things you will be celebrating? You will be celebrating festivals, birthday, and you will be celebrating uh, the thing of uh, festivals like Pongal, Christmas, Diwali, and so many festivals you are having, and you will be celebrating all. At the same time, you will be celebrating your national festivals, for example, uh, Republic Day and as a patriotic Independence Day, we will be celebrating this all. And what we will celebrate? Your birthdays, yes, you will be celebrating all your birthdays and family members, relatives, friends, birthdays, yes, you will be celebrating. And that is all. So, sometimes your parents' anniversaries, marriage days, you will be celebrating, yes. Celebration is something important in our life that we will be celebrating. But here in this lesson, it is different. Children, I want to ask a question. Are you all alive? Now, I hope you are all alive. Yes. Yeah, I am getting an answer that you say that I am alive. How you tell that you are alive? Sometimes we will be living a life and we will not uh, be alive. So, we will not be alive. Just we, are, we will be leading a life. That is it. Okay, this prose lesson gives a lesson to the author that two boys who is living even with so many difficulties and the author had so many questions in his mind and he got an answer that one must celebrate his aliveness. Because he is alive, we have to celebrate for that. So, that lesson he had learnt from this and that is why the chapter name is given as in celebration of being alive. So, if you have to celebrate that you are alive, just think over in this period, so many will be died and near your home or you would have heard in the news, so many thousands of people have been died. Just think over, God had protected you and saved you and with all difficulties that we are not able to go out and go to the school and all, but we are alive for that itself we have to celebrate and that today you will be after this lesson you will be celebrating being alive. Okay? In celebration of being alive, I think you will be celebrating for your aliveness. Okay, children, we will go for the lesson. Yeah, so what do you celebrate in life? What all the things, birthdays, new year, marriage, festival? You will be celebrating this and when you are celebrating, there will be so many way of celebrations and celebrating. Okay, we will see what is the next, okay. But here the author celebrates being alive. He was no less than a common man until he met two little boys in a hospital. Those two boys taught him an important lesson about life being alive. So, those two boys taught a lesson for him and what is those, those boy? two boys who is suffering and admitted in the hospital. In that situation, he saw two boys and from them he had learnt a lesson. And what is that lesson? Being alive. If you are having a life, being alive, for that you have to celebrate. Okay, children? Yeah. Let us uh, see about the author. Yeah. Christian Nathan Banan was bo born in rural South Africa in 1922. So, the author, you can see the picture. This is the author, you can see him. And here, he was born in the rural South Africa in the year 1922 to a poor parents as their fourth child. So, he was having three elder person in his family and he was the fourth child. He invented great 
interest in his academics and was determined to pursue medicine. So he was very much, he was doing his education good and he was determined to be a doctor, pursue a medicine. After the loss of his brother to cardiac ailment, his brother lost his life because of cardiac problem. He won many scholarship and pursues higher studies specializing in cardiac surgery. So he became a cardiac surgery and as a cardiac surgeon, Bernard focused on congenital and completed cardiac condition for which there no cure at all the time. After experimenting with heart transplantation on animals, so he had transplanted, transplanted the heart surgery to the animals and then first heart transplant had been done by him. So human to human heart transplanted in the year 1967 that was Christian Neithing Bernard who had uh, done it. He gained worldwide recognition and went on to develop a many surgery techniques which are being adopted till date. So his surgeries had been till date adopted by other surgery, surgeons, cardiac surgeons. So he had uh, wrote, Bernard has penned 14 books of 235 scientific articles. So he had uh, written, penned, so he had written 14 books and 235 scientific articles that have been published in reputed gen journals. Some of his books are, so you can see some of his books are One Life, 50 Ways of Healthy Heart and the Best Medicine, The Faith, A Pioneer in Cardiac Surgery and he obtained Doctor uh, Medicine and he became a doctorate, 11 honorary doctorate he got and in the late, uh, late year he established the Christian Bernard Foundation to serve the, and to promote the cause of unprivileged children throughout the world and died at the age of 70, 78 in the year 2001. So he was the first person to transplant art to human to human. First he done with the animal and then with that. And he died in the year 2001 when he was 78 years old. And he had uh, made a foundation for the unprivileged children throughout the world and held it and he was serving. Okay, children, we'll go and see what is that. So you can see that he was born in South Africa. He was a cardiac surgeon, first doctor to perform a heart transplant surgery in 1967 and 14 books he had wrote and 235 scientific articles had been written by himself. And one life, that was a book and 50 ways to the healthy heart, the best medicine, the faith, Christian Bernard Foundation to serve people. So this way this functions and it was doing. And Dr. Christian Bernard was the first doctor to perform a heart transplant surgery. He narrates an experience which has changed his perceptive of life altogether. So in this story, he just narrates how his life had been transplanted or transformed by the two person he is telling to you. Why people should suffer troubled Dr. Bernard as the nearer the end of his career as heart surgeon. So here when he was a heart surgeon and heard it, he was asking a question, why people have to suffer like this? So he was having a question against the God and he got the answer later. Okay, Dr. Bernard provided a statistical data of 125 million children born this year. So how many children are born in a year? 125 million children, 125 children uh, were born and he was telling children born this year, that year and 12 million are unlike to reach the age of 1. So 125 children are born as a child, as an infant, but even 2 million are unlikely to be reach the age of 1. 2 million are not reaching till the age of 1. And 6 million will die before the age of 5. So a child reaching before 5, how many children will be dying? And 6 million will die 
before they reaching 5 years. And the rest ends up as mental or physical cripples. So, and the remaining uh, some percentage will be ends up their uh, life with mental and cripples. You know what is mental? Yeah, something in a uh, brain, some problem and they will not be illy. Brain will not function them properly. So, they will be ill. And cripple, the other parts may be blind, deaf, no hands, no hands, uh, legs to walk like that. Some uh, problem in their body that is crippled. So, they will be just like that. His gloomy thought starts from an accident. So, he met an accident. He was a, leading a very good life as a doctor and he met an accident with his wife. At that time, he got this mindset, why people have to suffer like this? One day, Dr. Bernard and his wife were crossing a street after a happy meal. So, they does not know what will happen for the next second. They were just had a good meal in a hotel and just on the way they were wa walking in one second that accident took place and they both met an accident and they were suffering of that. So, luckily they were alive, only some part had been damaged. See, he and his wife met a severe accident. They met a severe accident. He had his ribs broken, profligated lungs and his wife was severely hurt. So, what happened to him? There was a severe um, uh, hurt in his uh, ribs. 11 ribs have been broken for him and out of that 11 uh, ribs and lungs have been damaged little and he was as a doctor, he had to undergo so uh, surgery but actually he have to do for uh, so many patients a uh, surgeon he are given appointment for so many uh, uh, people to do a heart surgery but he was he met an accident because of that accident he was not able to perform he was hospitalized for some days and he was thinking why life had been like this and the same way his wife have to the hospitalization of Bernard and his wife had effect of their routine so, they had a routine uh, life had been affected, both are admitted in hospital. His wife was uh, admitted in hospital, she was having a small baby and she had to take care and her responsibilities more. She had a shoulder uh, damage and uh, she can't do anything and somebody was taking care of the child and the other thing. And these two, especially Bernard as a doctor, he was thinking in his mind, I am a doctor, see this uh, accident made me to as a patient. And so long he was working as a doctor and he was not thinking what the suffering of the people will be. So now he is undergoing an, a thing and he has lot of questions in his mind and he was asking so many questions and he got an answer, yes. Patients were waiting for him to operate them. So he had given appointment and so many patients were there waiting for him to come and operate. His wife had fractured shoulders, she had a young baby who needed her care. So, a young baby was there and she had to take care and her shoulder had been broken and she was hospitalized and they were just thinking what to be done. He was filled with agony, fear and anger. He could not understand why such a thing had happened to them. So, he was uh, very anger and he was uh, frustrated and he was uh, worried. So, his uh, mind you can understand there was a lot of agony in his mind and he is having a question why it had happened to me. I am so perfect and I am as a doctor doing my job and I am perfect person. Why this happened to me? It was a question running in his mind and why such thing had happened to them. So, that was a big question in his mind. And he was thinking, if my father is there, what answer he would have given? So, his father believed that suffering was God's way of making noble. So, his father was a good uh, pastor and he was a very faithful person. And he knows that whatever the sorrow or uh, some experience we are getting because to make us more better and that is the wish of God. His father believed that suffering was God's way of making noble. So, it is a, any suffering is coming to any person. 
it will make them perfect and it is God's wish and God want to make them noble. So that was a, a wish of the God and that answer he got when he was thinking what will be the answer for his question. But he did not find any nobility in the crying of the child in the world. Previously, when he was a doctor, there was a child cry. He had taken very seriously. Child means it will cry. That's it. But after undergoing some experience, he understand what is the problem of the child, how the pain will be, and what will be the feeling of the uh, patient. This is all we got as an answer and uh, that made him a noble person. He found the suffering of children here to breaking uh, because of their total trust in doctor. So here you know that when you go to a doctor, you will be trusting, you will be just giving the place for the doctor as a God. So everybody will be doing that. And uh, the same it had happened and they were just thinking the doctors as a God because they were serving the life. The children also was just thinking the doctors are the gods for them who is giving life. And they will be uh, given in the place of God he was thinking. Thus he is compass compassionate to, towards children. So he became a compassionate, he, he loved children and started a foundation for the children later. Several years earlier one day Bernard had witnessed that called a Grand Frix of Cape town's Red Cross Children's Hospital. So this is the turning point for the doctor. When he was invited to Grand Fix Hospital, he went to the hospital. There he met two boys. That two boys changed his lifestyle. A nurse had left. You know, you see this, this is a, a thing you will be using for the hospital. You will be taking breakfast, medicine and all a trolley. And a nurse had left a breakfast trolley unattended was taken by two boys, a driver and a mechanic. So here are two persons, a driver and a mechanic. And one was sitting in the trolley and just with the help of his leg who is blind is just moving. And the person who is not having a one hand, he was just pushing the trolley. So a pushing person was called as a driver and the other one as a mechanic. So they both were just playing with the trolley. And when they were just play, playing with the trolley, the choice of role was easy because a mechanic was blind. So a mechanic was blind and he, so that's why he was sitting and provided the motor power by galloping along behind the trolley. So the driver is one, one arm, he had a cancer patient. And his hand was one, uh, one week before only amputated and with that one hand he was just pushing and playing forgetting totally about his, uh, he is a patient and he is having suffering and all just playing and enjoying. This made the transformation of Dr. Bernard. The driver had only one arm and steered the trolley. Why he was having one arm? He was a a bone uh, tumor for him and because of that tumor they uh, cut and uh, amputated the part of his hand and he was having only one hand with that he was cheer and playing. He totally forgot what was wrong with him. Yeah, the rest of the patient joined fun and encouraged them. The rest of the patient were enjoying and encouraging those two boys. They are all patient and they have to suffer and they have to just uh, feel sorry for their uh, sufferings. But instead of those two boys were playing, that made them to enjoy the life and they all encouraged them and they were just clapping and making them. So you can see this boy who is blind and the mechanic was seven years old. He was a seven years old boy and what is his problem is? One night when his mother and father were drunk, his mother threw a latrine at his father, missed and broken over the children's head and shoulder and lost his eyes. What had happened? His father and mother were drunken, drunken and one night when they were drunken, they were having a fight and uh, she had thrown the latrine light and it was just fall on, instead of falling on her husband, it fall on the child and broke his head 
and he became blind. So he was naturally born with good eyesight, but his mother, own mother made it. See, he had not even think of his uh, accident and he was blind and all, and he was cheerfully playing. This turned the art of the doctor and there was a transformation in his life. You can see the driver. The driver was hospitalized for a malignant tumor. You know malignant tumor is a cancer tumor and because of that his shoulder and arm were amputated because there was a spread of more spread of cancer in his hand. His arm had been removed from his body and he was one, one hand he was having that uh, survival itself difficult but without even thinking of it as a boy he is playing with the other boy fellowship and they both were enjoying the life. So this changed the doctor's mindset. Dr. Bernard realized that two boys had taught him a great lesson. So he learned a great lesson from those two boys. Even with so many of difficulties, they were just able to play and enjoy the life and that made the doctor to understand what is a life. So a great lesson. So you can have so many uh, things, what are deliveries, use, space, that, like that. Okay, he learned that the business of living is the celebration of being alive. So what is the business of a life? You have to celebrate your being alive. So you have to celebrate the life because God given you life and you are alive. For that itself you have to celebrate. I think you enjoyed the lesson children. I have given the gist of the lesson and I will continue the class afterwards. Um, this uh, thing always very clear. We will uh, just think what it is. The doctor met an accident and when he was met an accident, he was asking a question to himself. Why hap this happened to me? So that was a big question and he got the answer when he went to the hospital, Grand Fricks Hospital, where two boys taught a very good lesson. Children, are we also having a life for that itself we have to thank. We have to thank God for that. And... Uh, will be uh, then uh, will be enjoying our life if you think that why we have to live then there is no use of living at all so you ask a question and so that you will be thanking for that and we'll continue the lesson in the next class thank you children